drive as Wayne gets on. So, Hamas declared war against Israel with their massive attack on uh, Saturday, as uh, I f we found out about it here uh, Sunday morning in the news. And, uh, and so there's a lot of confusion among Mormons as to the role the Jewish scriptures play in Mormonism. And Mormons are taught wrong, and so they do not understand, because there's a lot of cover-ups, secrets that Mormons are being kept from. So in the Book of Mormon, the keystone of Mormonism, it clears everything up. No confusion whatsoever. Oh, but wait. The church refuses to footnote it. The learning of the Jews. That means that our religion by the founder, as we are told he is, Joseph Smith, is in the learning of the Jews. And that means it's not Christian. See how simple we made things? It means that Jesus Christ, the Christian Christ, is not supposed to be our Christ. Thus, the name of the church is not supposed to have Jesus in it. And so, what do we do? In the New Testament, the Book of Mormon, have stories that are literal history of Jesus. It's confusing, Travis. Purge your mind of Christianity. And then all of a sudden, oh, I see. Your banana. I'm not sure what is that Bugs Bunny on the Road Runner show? Can't remember. <clears throat> I know the banana on the tailpipe is Beverly Hills Cop. So, what then is the learning of the Jews? We can clear this up and put a, an explanation for the footnote for 1 Nephi chapter 1, verse 2. And then we'll worry about the language of the Egyptians afterward, although it's part of this. Because the Jews that we're talking about are the pre-Babylonian captivity Jews who were, wait for it, Egyptian. This is part of the misinformation that's been going around, is that even the Jews try to claim that King David was an independent king of the independent nation of Israel. And that has never been the case. They've always been a tributary to a bigger nation, giving tribute to them, and thus Egypt. And then northern Israel was taken over by Assyria. There was Armageddon one by the Hittites. And the Pharaoh was Pharaoh King 
David Moses. Tawu Mose the fourth. <clears throat> but the Jews don't want to accept that for some reason. They already have claim to the land of Judah at least. Not northern Israel. But nonetheless, the Jews have as their religion contained primarily in what's called their scripture, the Torah. It means tradition. And it doesn't mean tradition, right? That's not Kabbalah. Because I think Kabbalah means something else. I don't memorize. I use references. Teaching. Direction. Guidance. It's not law. So it's the teaching. So yeah, Kabbalah is tradition, isn't it? In of Kabbalah. Varies? Come on, Wikipedia. Mysticism. Knowledge. What means tradition? <laughs> Come on! Yeah, it is tradition. There it is. Literally, reception, tradition. God, don't mess with me. Because <laughs> that's what the learning of the Jews is in the Book of Mormon, is Kabbalah. And so, yeah, there are different groups of Jews. Well, the Orthodoxy are, are Babylonian Jews. They adhere mostly to the Babylonian Talmud, which is a uh, commentary type, uh, further explanation uh, mixed with other oral traditional laws written down for the first time. And uh, we get Lilith for the first time in the Talmud. But the Torah is composed of what's claimed to be the five books of Moses. Now they claim it's written by Moses, but the author of the, at least Deuteronomy, reveals himself as not Moses. Just read the end. Don't you read the end of the books first? <laughs> they give it away. These books are not by Moses. And then Deuteronomy, which is the law, which technically is the repetition of the law, <clears throat> is uh, uh, what Jesus refers to in his story a lot of the times. And everybody, technically, even Isaiah, when he says, a virgin shall conceive and give birth and name him Emmanuel, not Jesus. He gets that from the law. That's what he's talking about when he says, O house of David. And uh, mentions in other places. And so he is a man like Moses. But we're jumping ahead, aren't we? So the religion is about what's contained in these five books. This is their scripture. It is the canon scripture. This is what the Jews refer to first for answers. Then, if they can't find it in the Torah, they then go to the writings or the prophets. And the Hebrew words for those 
as an anachronism or acronym. Anachronism is what's in the Book of Mormon. <laughs> and in the Bible, when Christians turn them into literal history and replace the learning of the Jews. But acronym, it becomes the Tanakh. Now the Jews did not include other books written by Jews. And it's because that uh, the Jewish uh, Masoretes, although there's the Septuagint, uh, that conforms to Christians. But the Jews claim that the original Septuagint, which we don't have and doesn't exist, was written by 72 Jews who knew Greek and translated the Hebrew Bible into Greek all separately. And then when they got together to compare notes, oh, it's exactly the same letter for letter, word for word throughout the whole Tanakh, which included the Apocrypha, which is a Catholic thing. And that's why the Jews don't include it in their biblical Hebrew text is because the Christians culturally appropriated it. And thus why the New Testament is not accepted by the Jews because it's been tainted by the heathen Christians. Or as Joseph Smith says, the abominable Christians. And so there's a lot of other scriptures that belong to the Jews, but the Jews don't want to claim it because of the tampering and touching by Christians. And, and so this is their method of learning. There is no prophet. There are rabbis, which means father. And uh, the English version is a little complicated. You've got to refer to the biblical Hebrew text because sometimes Lord is Yahweh, sometimes it's Adonai, and sometimes it's other words, Elohim also. But it's Constantine that turned Elohim into a plural majesty as uh, it's considered singular because of the biblical Hebrew text which was made 800 to 1000 CE so 500 to 700 CE or 500 to 700 years after Constantine and this is also why Islam refers to Allah as we because of Constantine turning Trinitarian Jesus into a non-real person, which is not really a person because he's not real, figure, but not really a figure because he's not physical. There's really no word for him other than the word that Constantine created, Hamuzion. It has no meaning, thus the only meaning is not real. Right there in the first creed of Christianity, the creation of Jesus, creatio ex nihilo, that Joseph Smith in verse 19 says is abominable. And who was it the one that told Joseph it was abominable? That personage. And who do Mormons claim that that personage is? Jesus. And so Jesus calls himself abominable, huh? Oh, but it's not Trinitarian, Jesus, Travis. It's non-Trinitarian. You still replace the Jews. Because the Jews have a book of Jesus. Wow, you didn't know that, did you? 
I don't see a book of Yahweh here, or Jehovah. <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses are so funny. They say that the phonetics of the name of God must be pronounced Jehovah. <laughs> That's how it's always been, even before the Latin introduction of the J replacing the Yod of Biblical Semitic languages. Babylonian Semitic languages. Oh, dear God. So, in Genesis, they claim that this is the origin and it's a literal history, thanks to Constantine. And the Exodus is the pattern for everything that the Jews write. So, the book of Jesus that follows Deuteronomy. Yeah, ja, Jesus, giving away the Hebrew name. I'm making you look it up. <laughs> Jesus is the man like Moses. He parts the waters, takes the Ark of the Covenant, threw on dry ground into the Promised Land. The Exodus. And in the book of Judges, different word than Danites, you have Samson, who's a Danite. Yes, it's prophecy. Right, Mormons? Who most of you in the Brighamite religion, who have pioneer heritage, are from the Danites. I have one of four grandparents who is from the Danites. It's my yearsly family on my mom's side. And, uh, and so, yeah, he gives us the three days of darkness. After all, he's the Sun King, translated into English. And that's an exclusive translation, because if you Google search the baby name meaning of Samson, they'll tell you it's Sun Child. Mm-mm. No. Sun King. The N is for King. Solomon, King of Peace. The Peace King. And there's a reason why he's named Solomon as the son of David. Because Jerusalem has peace in it too. And then nobody knows how what Jeru means. It's real simple. It's the God Yah. Hello. I have to do everything for you. So yes, there's a reason why Americans put along the path of the twenty first of August two thousand seventeen Sun God crossing over America or Passover of America over seven Salem's. There are people who know and they're the ones trying to murder you. They're the bad guys. I've already done the call out of the widow's son and yeah. I am the last of the Knights Templar. I am the one who's holding the Holy Grail in the Egyptian gold treasure plates. I know the secret. And I know that women are the ones who are hiding and covering up the map to Zion. It's right here in America. You thought it was Jerusalem, didn't you? Because that's the difference. The authors did not write literal history. You can't claim it it's literal history because Constantine 
was the first one to say it was, and they were written before him. And so obviously they're not literal history. Thus the Book of Mormon. Guess what? Not literal history. It was written by Sidney Rigdon as the major author. Linguistic science bears this out. And I'm the one who discovered it's Joseph Smith Sr. who had to rewrite the 116 pages because of his involvement on 9-11-1826 at Canandaigua, New York with William Morgan. See, I do real church history research. The church has posted the documents for you. They left some material out of Wikipedia. They don't want you to know. So you have to figure out how Wikipedia can be utilized despite the tampering of the church. So you find William Morgan, you see, oh, okay, he was arrested while working on a book in Canandaigua, New York on 9-11-1826, but his home and the print press was over in Batavia. Hmm. Then you use a map to see how far away they were, and you say, oh, okay, by horse, it's two-day journey. Hmm. So what's he doing working on the book in Canandaigua at the Lodge, Freemason Lodge, York Rites, with a Knights Templar, rather than at his home? Oh, I guess it has something to do with him getting arrested and they're threatening to murder him and he disappeared. Nobody knows where the manuscript pages went. And then you study about Joseph Smith Sr. and you learn that he was a Master Mason. At what lodge? Oh, there it is. And then you read the book that the Batavian Press published to try to make up the money that they lost and used his name, William Morgan, to try to get some money back. And uh, all it is is just the three degrees of either masonry at the time, Scottish Rites and York Rites. And uh, then it gives you a list of duties and responsibilities of the Master Mason, which is vital to every single Mormon. Every single Mormon should have that book. It's online, PDF version, get it. It's how you find out what Sid, or, uh, Smith Sr.'s responsibilities were during 9 11, 1826. It tells you. It actually exposes him as the one who rescued William Morgan and took on the responsibility to finish the book, which became known as the Book of Mormon. Jewish Kabbalah with Knights Templar York Rites Masonry. Not a coincidence, because that's how you do research. And so the Orthodox Jews are a little more strict. They follow Babylon. They got assimilated. And, and so the Bible stories are written during the Roman period time, telling them that they're not supposed to be assimilated into Babylon. <laughs> Oops! <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, you have uh, 1 Samuel, which means name of God. What's the name of God? Not Jesus. Jesus is yet another symbolic type and shadow story prophecy of the Latter-day Christ, who they tell you is a man like Moses. And Isaiah gives you the name Emmanuel. And the other authors do give you the name because sun god, 
that's him. Sun King. Emmanuel is the Egyptian sun god at noonday. So El, God, Amun, the Egyptian god of the sun at noonday. And so Samson is the sun king because he's the man like Moses. And so Jesus is Yah of salvation. And so when you go to Jeremiah chapter 23, you see that he's just speak as a child. It's back in five. Oh, gotta get to 23. That's why. Woe unto the Mormon prophets that destroy and scatter the Mormons of my pastor. See what you do when Joseph Smith tells you it's all about Mormons. Joseph Smith and his church getting usurped and him murdered and replaced and taken over by Brigham Young. And so the latter days, Joseph Smith tells us, section 103, verse 16, he's Mormon. Because Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19 is a man like Moses. They're not thinking about Trinitarian or non-Trinitarian Christian. Hadn't even been invented yet. You're pulling an anachronism. They're thinking in terms of the physical realm, not the non-real realm. And so you cannot tell the Jews that their prophecies are about Christian Jesus. That makes you an anti-Semite. And so the reason why the Jews use the name Jesus it's not just because it's the book of Jesus. But the Gospels use the name Jesus because of verse 6, Jeremiah 23. Behold, the days come, latter days, saith Yahweh. I'm pretty sure it could be Adonai, could be Aten. In Amos 3, 7, it's Aten. That I will raise unto David. There's Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19. Raise. And a man like Moses. Thus David. David, Moses. Armageddon 1. David, Moses the fourth. 18th dynasty of Egypt. That's who they're referring to here. Even though it's written during the Roman period of time. See, Jeremiah was a real character. We do have records from that time period that he was locked up. But, because of the linguistic pattern in his books or in his in his book scroll no there's anachronisms there's inaccuracies of history thus he's prophesying so thus it's not jeremiah it's a jew who's writing as aka nom de plume jeremiah because he's a famous person in history Isaiah, also, legitimate person in history. We have extra documents that support that he did exist, but not his scroll of Isaiah, which has some issues just like Jeremiah does. Thus, written during the Roman period of time. <clears throat> and the Roman period of time of which I'm speaking of is like 100 BCE to 200 CE. And you can compare with other books to see which one came first. So like the Gospels, 
Jesus is referring to Deuteronomy. Thus, Deuteronomy came first before the Gospels. Not just because you turned them into literal history and that there's supposed to be somewhere out there an original document called the Law. And so a righteous branch that comes from the Egyptian god Horus, also called Sun Amun. That should sound familiar to Mormons. And a king, a Christ. Kings were Christ to the Jews, also called Messiah. Depends on whether you're speaking Greek or Hebrew. But uh, verse 6, in his days, which means the latter days. This is why the Jews do not accept Jesus, the Christian replacement of the Jewish Christ, who is a symbol and type and shadow of the man like Moses, whose name is Sun God at noonday. Can't be Jesus, because in his days, Utah shall be saved. I guess if Mormons continue to disbelieve, they'll prove the prophecies wrong. Because I know the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is doing all they can and even paid the Judas prize to make sure the prophecies are false. Utah and Judah are phonetically the same. Isn't that interesting? And so, Jesus of the Roman period, did he save the Jews? It says, in his days. It doesn't say, in his second coming, <laughs> he will finally save the Jews. No! And so, thus, the Gospels are... Another story like Jeremiah is prophesying about. Jesus, a.k.a. Emmanuel, is merely a prophecy of the Latter-day Christ. And wouldn't you know it, Matthew has a whole bunch of dates of the day and hours. That's weird, because somebody went and put in, no man knows the day and the hour. But it's all over. I mean, the first one uh, is technically the prophecy of Isaiah, because Isaiah says, hey, I'm giving you a constellation conjunction, which is translated wrong as sign, in the heavens. Virgo shall conceive Jupiter and bear Jupiter, and she'll call his name instead Emmanuel. And then so Revelation chapter 12. The author of John of Revelation tells us the full sign conjunction that Isaiah tells us. Clothed with the sun which is in the middle of September to the middle of October, moon under her feet, goes around 29.4 days with the uh, phases of the moon. <clears throat> and upon her head, Leo the lion, the symbol of Utah, which, what was the first lion couch? to be murdered by Samson, the Sun King? Hmm. I wonder when the constellation on the 21st of August 2017 occurred. Hmm. I'm sure Mormons don't care. Even though it was Monson's birthday and the ancient religious calendar New Year of the Egyptians, which means the Egyptians knew, and all of these are based on the Egyptian documents. 
but uh, you know. And so here we have in Matthew, he's trying to cover it up. He doesn't name Isaiah, which makes me wonder, but he names him Jesus instead. He says, behold, a virgin. Where's the sign? The conjunction sign in heavens. Doesn't give it to us, per se. And uh, says that it was spoken of by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, what prophet? Doesn't tell us. But everybody knows this. Verse 23, behold, a virgin shall be with child. But he leaves out sign, the conjunction. Bring forth a son, shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, it's not an I, as Isaiah has. All right. 23D. And 23A. Yeah, it's an I in Isaiah. It must be a different word. Different name. Not the same. <laughs> and then some dumbass who doesn't know Hebrew put in, which is to be interpreted, God with us. Dear God. So yeah, the God is the L. And then with is uh, the... Uh, the um part and the n is the the grammatical termination for us this is wrong it's phonetic transliteration of the ancient egyptian sun god at noonday or whoever tampered with this book is purposely wanting to mislead you away from the truth and so, despite the prophecy saying that his name shall be Emmanuel, Joseph knew her not till she brought forth her firstborn son and called his name Jesus. That's supposed to remind you to go to Jeremiah. 23, where Emmanuel, the man like Moses, will save Mormons of Utah. Joseph Smith, because you didn't pay attention to the duties and responsibilities of the Master Mason of the York Rites with the Knights Templar. The Holy Grail bloodline of the Christ with the Egyptian gold treasure plates. So yes, Joseph Smith in verse 40 tells us who told him? Oh, Nephi did, huh? Because you're looking at the Joseph Smith papers not the tampering by Willard Richards. <clears throat> and so, yes, section 27, verse 5, needs to be corrected. Because Joseph Smith wrote it that way. It needs to be corrected because Joseph Smith says it needs to be corrected. You don't change anything unless it's in the Torah. You don't change anything unless Joseph Smith or the Book of Mormon tells you. And who tampered with Joseph Smith's words? Under the orders of Brigham Young did. Automatically disqualified as not authoritative. We need to go back to the original documents just like the Jews should have done when they created the Biblical Hebrew text disaster. You do not tamper with the text. Only the man like Moses has authority to explain the Torah and change 
the Torah. Thus, the man, like Moses, is the only one who can explain the Book of Mormon to Mormons and the words of Joseph Smith and make any necessary changes. No one else. So why are you making changes, Travis? Oh my God! And so yes, Mormons would rather believe in the replacement of the Jews. Their religion, their scriptures, their rituals, their Christ, then trust them to be accurate. That it's about a real human being. Because that's too simple. Occam's razor, nah. <laughs> because it means that they're actual prophecies, not forced prophecies. <laughs> of self-fulfilling prophecies. You know, Constantine came after and then said, well, the Old Testament is prophet about Jesus who's already come and gone. <laughs> so he cut off prophecy of the Jews. This was the biggest anti-Semitic act in history. Jesus literally is the anti-Semitic Antichrist. And what is the name of this church again? And who is the Christ of this church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that was founded by Brigham Young, who replaced Joseph Smith at the Book of Mormon and took away the plain and precious parts, truths, That came from the Book of Mormon, didn't it? And so here's another date, which is actually the same date. Now, when Jesus was born in the House of Bread of Utah. In the days of Zedekiah, king of Babylon, Jerusalem. Yep. See how they created the story here. This was written after Herod the Great. Herod the Great died in 4 BCE. So if you're going to turn this into literal history, guess what, Mormons? Jesus wasn't born April 6th, 1 CE. Because now what do you do? Do you say that this is wrong and Herod needs to die in 1 CE or 2 or 3 or 4 CE? Hmm. Conundrum. Because you've already dismissed the Book of Mormon, saying that 600 years from the time Lehi left Jerusalem, which was the first year of the reign of King Zedekiah, King of Judah, which was 597 BCE, which means it would have been 4 CE. And I'll give you a hint. Joseph Smith Sr. is trying to teach us something, and I've already covered it in the videos, as well as the video series on the Book of Mormon for you. 8 April. So yes, they did put it on the 6th of April, but for a reason. You have to learn the learning of the Jews to know and see the reason that they did that on that day. It's a Thursday, I think. I don't think it was a Tuesday. And so this is what they're telling you. Because it's eight days. Eight years, I mean. Because Passover is eight days. We just had suck it. Eight days. Hamas attacked on the eighth day, which is the honorary day of suck it. They knew what they were doing. They are not innocent. Neither is Palestinians. 
And so, yeah, I can keep on going and explain everything for you. Even make the changes. And talk about the fulfillments of the Mormon, who is your Christ. I've got super sacred secret knowledge on the matter. Kabbalah. In the book of Numbers, chapter 12, Aaron and Miriam try to coo Moses' church. Siblings can't trust them. Right, Todd? In verse 6, the Lord chastises them. Hear now my words, if there be a prophet, which before time was called Seir, which in Egyptian is Peter. Mary is beloved, by the way, in Egyptian. Behold my son of Mary, in whom I am well pleased. It's not her actual name. The mother of Emmanuel is Judith, because that was Esau's wife after losing the birthright and blessing to Jacob, the usurper. He was named well. But you have to know that story, because if you'd listen to Nelson tell it, oh dear God, it's right there in the text, Nelson. You didn't need to consult Hebrew scholars who lied to you, obviously. One of them, meanings, oh dear God. That's what you get for having a false prophet lead the church of Jesus Christ of abomination. I will make myself known unto him in a vision. So what was Moses' vision? The burning bush. That was his authority to start his missionary service mission to the house of Israel to rescue them from the great and abominable church of Pharaoh. So, you're looking for a man like Moses, Mormon, who will sue the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints during the latter days <coughs> of the three days of darkness of the Sun God making crossroads shadows on the United States of America in the form of the Paleo-Hebrew A and the last letter T which is Chi, not Tau even though Babylonian Semitic says it's Tau Paleo-Hebrew, no, it's the Chi it's the cross of the Christ the death sign is the last day which is the end of the ministry. So the first day of darkness is in the first year of the latter days. The last day of darkness is in the last year of the latter days. And thus starts the millennium after that. So we're having on Saturday the big number two. Samson tells us about it. It's his first wife that gets burned, the ring of fire. And in Virgo, that's how you know what he's talking about. He gave you the day and the hour in a story form. That author was smart. And so, yeah, Joseph Smith, what was his first vision? Oh, yeah, who the great and abominable church is. Who the great and abominable Christ is. And his second vision just happens to coincide with the exact same second vision of Lehi. What was Lehi's first vision? Fire on a rock. Second vision is exactly the same as Joseph's second vision. And... The star date that Lehi gives us is from Revelation chapter 12. The Book of Mormon starts us off 
in 2017. Thus, everything in it is about the latter days. Everything is prophecy for Mormons. And you miss it because you replaced it with Christianity. So, yeah, I can keep on going. We'll just go for several hours. I think only four hours this recording will last. You're still listening, right? So are you now convinced? Well, obviously, if you're listening this long. 